The next question is, in the diagram below, ABC is 30 degrees. Find the area of the shaded region if the radius of the circle is one. Okay, cool. So this is our A, it's not that clear. This is B and this is C. So angle A over here is 30 degrees and we're looking for, we are looking for um, the area of this shaded region. Okay, cool. So here we are given the angle that is at the circumference. And if we think about the angle that is at the circumference, that means we can be able to get another angle from there because with the angle of the circumference, it would be half um, the angle that is in the center, meaning the one that is in the center would be double the one that is at the circumference. So if we can go into the center with these um, two lines here, okay, let's try to make it a little bit better. So I'll say, this is the center, then we can go on in here. So then we can say that that is 60 degrees, okay? Because this is 30 degrees, so it will be double that, so that will be 60 degrees. Okay, cool. So now we can be able to work out the area of this part, right? Because you have 60 degrees, um, so you have 60 degrees, so but you have 60 degrees of 360 of the circle and then multiply it by pi r squared. And we already know what our pi is. So 60 over 36, that would be six over 36. Um, and six over 36 multiplied by pi one squared, that would then be one over six pi, all right? and we should be equal to just pi over six. Okay, cool. So we've worked out this part right here. Now we then need to figure out a way in which we can work out um, this other part that is outside of here. Now in this one, we can be able to work with the, the triangles. Now let me just use some straight lines in order to measure these so that we can be able to work a little bit better. Right. So then the angle would be going here, and going there, and this would be 60 degrees. This would be at our center. So if we actually can go from this to the other side, we would have cut the circle in half. So it means we have a semicircle on either side. Now, a revolution of a circle, so we have 60 here, but you know that, and so to complete the other side of the circle, this would be 300. Now in this 300, um, 150 lies on this side and 150 lies on the other side. So we essentially have two triangles divided into that space. Um, one triangle is 150, and then we have these two radiuses here. So we have this radius here and this radius here. And this one also is a radius. And this one also connects to a radius. And that radius is one and one. So we have two triangles like that. Now, in those situations, to work out an area, we basically just say the area of a, of a triangle would be one over two AB sine C. Okay, cool. So AB would be one and one. So that would be AB is equal to one over um, two times one times one sine 150 degrees. And to solve that would be one over two. So sine 150, sine 150 is basically sine 180 minus 30, which is in the second quadrant and it's positive sign. So that would just be sine 30. So that would be one over two sine 30. If you remember your special angles, sine 30 is one over two. So that would be one over two times 
1 over 2, which would be equal to 1 over 4. Now, remember that this would be the same for two triangles. So then that would mean that that 1 over 4 that you got would have to be multiplied by 2. So if you multiply that by 2, it would be 2 over 4, which is equal to 1 over 2. And so the area of that shaded region would be the area of these two triangles, which is 1 over 2, plus the area of this 60 degrees of a circle, right? And so which one would that be? So that would be answer number B. All right, cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Please reach out in the comments if you have any questions. Let's go into the next question. The last question says in the diagram below, two concentric circles are shown. Um, they have variety four and eight. The point A um, is the midpoint of OB. The line segment AC has a length of five. Determine the length of the segment um, CB. So we're looking for this length over here, C, CB. So that length that connects C and B there. Um, let me just do it better. So CB, this would be what you're talking about, CB right there. Okay, cool. Let's think about this a bit. Okay, cool. So we're being told that uh, we have a radius um, of four and eight. So then that would mean that the radius for the whole thing from zero down to B would be um, eight. And so even going down there would be um, another eight. Let me just see it right. So that would be another eight here. Okay, cool. And then the other thing that we're being told is that here it is um, five. Okay. And then the other thing that we're being told is that that point A is the midpoint of O and B. So if this is the midpoint and this is eight, that would mean that it's four here and it is four there. Okay, cool. Now we have two interesting um, triangles that are there. If I can just draw them outside, we have a triangle that looks, uh, let me use straight ruler. So we have a triangle that looks um, this way. And that is triangle um o c b okay and then inside o c b there's then another triangle now let's just write uh, make sure the parameters of this triangle so we have eight we have eight um so that would mean that these two angles over here would be equal um and then we have an angle that comes from the center which we need to perhaps figure out at some point what that angle is. And ultimately what you're looking for, sorry, this is C, B, C, B. So what you're ultimately looking for is this C, B. Now, the other thing that we do have, we also have another triangle, which looks like this. Um, um, and this one, what you do know about it is that, so for, it's A, B, right? So it's A, B, C. So that's an A, B, C uh, angle. And so what does it have though? So what does it have? So it is four here because from A to B is four, from A to O is four. So we'd have four there. And then we're given that here it is five. Okay, um, and then what else do we know about this one? Mm, not much, 
Okay, cool. Not much. This one doesn't help much. Um, let's look at another one and see maybe if it can give us all the sites that we need. Let's look at uh, this OAC. So OAC looks uh, more or less like this. So OAC looks more or less like that. So we have OAC. So OA is four. Um, so, sorry. Yeah, we have OAC, yeah? so yes. Yeah, so to C, it is eight, yes. And then CA is five. So we have all the sides here. So that does help a bit if we have all the sides in an angle and then one angle, sorry, one triangle where we don't have a side. And if you do notice here is that this angle, these two triangles, they share the same angle. They share this angle because it's all here and it's all there. So what we can use here is we can perhaps be able to use a cosine graph using all of these um, lines here because if we use the cosine rule, then the only thing that we have to solve for is the cos. So let's use the cosine rule. So we're gonna have a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus two bc um, cos a. Okay, cool. Now the angle that we'll be looking for is this one. So then cos a would basically be that side a and cos a would be, this would be our small letter a. Uh, now ignore the whole AC that I already have, but the opposite angle to the angle is the A. So then that would be um, five squared equals to um, four squared plus um, eight squared minus two, four times eight cos A. Okay, cool, let's simplify that. So five squared is um, 25, four squared is 16, eight squared is 64. Negative two times four is, um, negative two times four is um, eight, negative eight times eight is negative 64, negative 64, let me just write that quickly, negative 64. Cos um, A. Okay, cool. So I have negative uh, 64 cos A there. Okay, cool. Now 16, 16 plus 64. So 16 plus 64 would be, so that's 70, that's 80. So that would be 80. Okay, so that would be 80, and that would have 25 minus 80 is equal to negative 64 cos A. Now 25 minus 80 would be negative 55. So that would be minus 55 is equal to negative 64 cos A. Then divide by negative 64 both sides, divide by negative 64. So then cos A would be equal to 55. Um, sorry, so 55 over 64. Okay, so that would be the cos A then, 65 over 64. And we can perhaps then be able to come and apply it to this triangle over here. So how do we apply this to this triangle? Well, again, we can use the cosine rule. Now in the cosine rule, this would be the side that we're looking for. So then that would mean that we'd say, well, C, B squared would be equal to, well, eight squared plus eight squared minus two, eight times eight. Um, now, instead of saying cos that angle over there, because I said that these angles share the same angle. So instead of using that cos, I already have what cos is equal to. 
and that will be 55 over 64. Okay, so let's continue. So then CB squared is equal to um, 64 plus 64 minus, so eight times eight is 64 times negative two, that would be minus 128, um, minus 128 times 55 over 64. All right, cool. Let's continue from there. So C, B squared, and remember we're looking for C, B, so we're getting close now. So 64 plus 64 is um, 128. Then let's try and solve this one. Um, well, firstly, 128 over 64 would be two. Um, so that would be two. So negative 128 over 64, that would be two. Then multiply that by 55. So that would be minus um, 110. Okay, cool. So 128 minus 110, the CB squared is equal to 128 minus 110, it will be equal to 18. Okay. And then, so that's CB squared. And so to find CB, we have to root that in. And it would be CB is equal to um, the square root of 18. So there's the square root of 18. And that answer there is um, square root of 18. Hopefully that makes sense. It was kind of one of those tough ones. Um, if you have any questions or you need me to explain a little bit further, please let me know down in the comment section. Now, goodbye, guys. See you in the next video. Cheers.